What's going on, everybody? Happy Friday Nitro Gang Live. Hope you all had a great week. I hope some of you were out there making a deal, putting yourself on the path to a Nitro restoration. I, I have done just that, okay? No week is wasted. Now, sure, I do have a day job, but you know what I do on my lunch break? I check Facebook Marketplace for Nitros, guys. That's what I do. Let me wait a little while to uh, have you guys here in the stream. I'll say hello. We got Michael and Zatari. We got Just Joe, Nitro, and Electrix RC. I see we have Tara Curry. I appreciate you guys all being here. Uh, let me just watch my own ad here. I can't even skip my own ad. It's like, what's the world coming to, you know? Can't even skip your own ad. Tomorrow, I got to go to Costco. They probably won't even have any more sales because they don't want to lower that inflationary pricing. You know what I mean? It's like, dude, inflation went up. Salaries didn't go up and they just kept the prices high. Unbelievable. Okay, we got ourselves Benjamin Martinez here in the stream. Now, um, if you're interested in some of my recent 3D printing of adventures, they have gone where no 3D printer has gone before. And they're going to go even further. Okay, we're going to put the warp drive on that 3D printer. And the plans I have... The plans are going to be out of this world. They're going to hit Mach whatever Star Trek did, okay? I don't know what they did, okay? We got Eugene Pony here. How you doing, man? I enjoyed your comment there on the, on the 3D printed spur gear. I have it right here next to me in case you guys are interested in a nylon 3D printed Revo spur gear. Here it is. It doesn't look that bad, does it? Keep in mind, I, I am really using a printer that is not rated. For this kind of filament at all so i am honestly even surprised that it came out this good i will have to buy a better printer okay so i'm gonna have to buy a 400 printer i've already started uh saving up for the 400 printer reality is whenever you get a 3d printer basically your first like your first time it's a learning experience it's just something you're gonna have to understand it's a learning experience yeah you threw the money out okay but like you could still print usable stuff i did print some usable stuff but the thing is uh what people don't really consider with the 3d printer technology is are the parts usable um if you just want to print like figurines and statues you could you could do that with like a 200 dollars printer all day long even at night but if you really want to print anything with some um you know engineering type uh filament then you're gonna need 400 up to 700 dollar printer at least at a minimum okay we got uh, how you doing there we got dev um he goes you are responsible for me buying five nitro lsts dude you're promoted to uh the lst vp right now sickening we got ourselves rocky mountain bashers how are you uh we have earl moorhead here uh i appreciate earl moorhead's view on the new traxxas max uh, what is it called? The Max Slash? The Max Slash? And in fact, I, I will talk a little bit about the Max Slash, maybe. If you guys um, want to see me buy it, I mean, I would consider it, to be honest with you. I would consider it. I don't want to say um, I don't want the Max Slash because it's electric, because that's like really, really negative. And um, it's a dumb thing to say, okay? I'm not going to say stuff like that really ever again. Just because it's an electric, I'm not going to say I don't want it. But I will say, if there's nothing that competes in that segment of the Nitro Gang world then I think it's a worthwhile uh, effort for us to consider it. What do you guys think about that? We got Jason Brawley in the stream. How you doing, man? Uh, so the thing is with the Traxxas Max Slash, you guys understand, I have like the Nitro Slash. I have a Slayer. I have the very first two-wheel drive Slash VXL. I have a four-wheel drive Slash VXL. Like, who else on YouTube has that many freaking Slashes? I have so many Slashes, I'm about to get slashed in the face right now. Okay. But we're not going to talk about that because like that kind of language is not allowed on YouTube. And even though there's one individual saying it, uh, we're not going to mention those people. Oh, we got Mighty Mike. How you doing, man? He goes, if you get the Mac slash, you got to run it. I would run it. I would run it. So Tara Curry here agrees with me. You know, before, before I will say maybe my point of view was a little bit um, unfair. But, you know, in my age of uh, spending time on public transportation and sitting there thinking about what the hell am I going to work for? Well, it's to make money for RCs, everybody. Okay, that's what it's for. But in reality, I think the Traxxas Max Slash, is, it's really just like a short course uh, style uh, uh, X-Max. I mean, maybe I'm incorrect, but, you know, I, I haven't seen it up close. I did look at the pictures. It appears to be a short course style 
X Max for six ninety nine. Is the price crazy? It's in line with basically what, what those chassis cost, right? Like, it, it's not that crazy, I think, in my opinion. Um, those models have very, very good resale value. So that's also something you really got to consider, right? So $699, but then you could almost always sell it for like $500, maybe, if you're lucky, you know? So really, uh, it's really not the end of the world, what I think it is. Okay, I'm going to read Earl Morehead's comments right here. The Slash has history like the T-Max hybrid. I think it'd be cool for your Slash history. That's what I was thinking as well. I um, I think I think that that's kind of like the point, right? I'm not just getting the Max Slash just to get it, just to like, you know, uh, sh show that I got it, whatever. No. Uh, interestingly speaking, I remember uh, getting the clones of the very first Slashes that came out. I don't know if you guys ever shopped on this website. It was called Hobby King. Hobby King, man. Hobby King. They had clones of everything. They had clones of like Bajas, I remember, for like $290. Man, I regret not buying the very first Baja clones. And they weren't King Motors. They were like their own um, company they had sourced from. I think they were Turnigy. Maybe they were Turnigy. Turnigy wasn't total trash. It was like 80% trash. What's going on? We got Al Casa here in the stream. Also out there making HPIs great again. He knows what I'm talking about. All right. Uh, let me just see what you guys are talking about. And we'll open this up. So... I put in the title to this video. Let me just give you a little, a little glimmer, a little glimpse of what's about to go down, okay? <sighs> There's a nitro in this box. What's going on there? Hey, Wire, RC, how you doing, man? That captain, how you doing? He goes, have I seen any BMT nitros? Uh, or do I have any BMT nitros? I I'm not familiar with that one, to be honest. I think that's an older brand, right? BMT, probably 1990s or something, maybe. I'm not sure. But either way, if I'm ever around those, I will do my best to pick it up for the channel. I appreciate the RCs for what they are. In fact, you know, cars. Let, let's talk about cars for a second here. Geo Metro. Anybody want to own a Geo Metro here? They were known for what? Three cylinders and nothing else. They're actually pretty collectible today, right? But the Geo Metro. Released during a time period when people wanted fuel economy and a cheap new car uh, and a convertible. And guess what? The Geo Metro satisfied all of those checkboxes, right? So just like any RC, there's always a position where it will serve the market well. Product placement, guys. Although if you ask me, Rivian didn't do their market research and neither did Lucid. Okay, I think you guys out in California, you, you have a lot of those Lucid cars, right? Lucid Air. It's a $140,000 EV. I'm not in the market for that. Okay, anyway, we're going to continue. So, the theme of this story, guys, what's in the box? Now, I put down a couple links in the description to this video. The very first two links are to short course trucks. Does that mean... There's a short course nitro in here. Cause like, that's kind of what I'm hinting at, okay? Now I also said Terra Curry, who used to be a real sponsored Kyosho track driver, team driver, would appreciate a Kyosho. So am I saying there's a short course Kyosho in here? Like, am I saying that? I don't know if I'm saying that, but I think I'm saying it, okay? All right, let me see what you guys are saying. And then we will uh, open it up, take a look at it. Uh, we'll Examine the condition, check out the engine, probably gonna have to take it apart like always, it's an old nitro, that's what you gotta do. Okay. All right, so yeah. Um, El Casa goes, is it a Team Associated SC10 GT? It's not a Team Associated, okay? But I know you have one, and I saw yours last time, that thing was actually quite, quite impressive. It's a damn shame that really only, like, Traxxas is left making the short course trucks. I think I got the very last of the Hobeo short course trucks they had. And like after I bought mine, did a couple videos on them, they're like three in stock, they all sold out. So uh, there's no more, all right? There's no more of those. Okay, we got Melissa, been a member of the Nitro Gang for 19 months. Where were you before that? Where were you? Okay, anyway, I appreciate that uh, to all my channel members. Now, let me see what you guys are saying and we will uh, continue. I just gotta wait a little while longer here uh, for some people to show up in the stream. The notifications sometimes go out late. But, you know, I'm not here to complain about notifications and stuff like that. Anyway, we got any guesses? Go ahead. Make a guess. And you can win an air filter. Okay? 
Actually, do you know how long it took me to print this air filter to make it good? I had to do like eight trial runs. So basically when you get these files, right, they're actually almost all, almost all trash. You have to modify the specs in the slicer almost all the time. It took me about five times to come up with a properly sized air filter housing for like a, you know, a small block type engine like that. Okay, sickening. The captain goes. Is it a Kyosho Inferno or a Burns? So those are buggies as far as I'm aware. I do have the in the Burns and an Inferno. I, I No, no, it's not one of those. It's not one of those. We got Rock and Roll the RC. How you doing, man? I'm just out here hugging my box. There's nothing funny going on. Just box hugging, you know? It's all right. Okay, we got... Uh, well, it's definitely not a pink Barbie. There's no pink Barbies in here. Okay, Mighty Mike goes, is it a Nitro Rampage? It is not. It is not. Eugene Pony goes, when did Walmart start selling Nitros? <laughs> Actually, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, you, you guys might know, I do have a, a Nitro that was at one time sold in Walmart, right? The Nitro RCX. I showed it in a couple streams. Um, I'm probably not going to open it up. I mean, it's... You know, it's a really historical RC. So, uh, when we hit a couple more viewers here in the chat, we will dig in to the box. All right? But for now, I want to ask you guys, which spur gear would you take? Look at both of these spur gears. This shiny one, super shiny right here, or this less shiny one, which one would you take? These are both uh, the stock 38 tooth spur gears for a Revo. All right, so these are going to be uh, tested quite soon. Which one do you think is the more durable one? So people like the shiny one. People like the shiny one. So I'm sad to tell you, the shiny one is actually the really low-grade plastic one, right? Um, this one that printed a little bit on the shit side, if you take a look at the back, it's actually quite bad, but that's the way the file is, guys. That's literally the... What's up there, Jason Brawley? How you doing? Sorry if I didn't say hello to you there earlier. Um, so the way the files are, they're, they're not really designed that well, right? So I'm, I'm learning um, like CAD Fusion 360 right now. Hopefully I can design my own. I know a friend of mine, No Music RC, uh, left a comment the other day. And uh, I hope he gets to see this so he knows I read the comment. He goes, he needs a spur gear for an MRC Thunder King. Um... It's really not that hard to design these, but like I'm, I gotta learn some of the CAD software and I'll, uh, I'll get down to it. So this one, the ugly one, is nylon. Uh, nylon is what you want. Basically that's what like the suspension arms and the RC cars we use, right? Especially in the Bajas they're made out of. Now sometimes they're also reinforced with, um, what do they call it? Graphite, graphite or like carbon. Uh, the thing is with these printers, you can't actually print um, filament like that without destroying the print nozzle the head believe it or not it's like i i couldn't even understand how that happens so those abrasive printer filaments they you need a hardened nozzle and the the printer that i have it doesn't you can't really print anything that requires a hardened nozzle so what i'm saying is i need a new printer okay if i really want to make nitros great again guys i um i'm gonna have to get like a a 400 dollars printer so uh this was like a 200 hundred dollar printer so basically it's gone okay we got hoser one how you doing man happy to see you here he goes what's up broski how you doing oh we got white boy welcome back to the channel membership how are you man uh long time no see happy to have you back all right now um let's see what people are saying all right one big grease monkey what's up bro um so we'll talk a little more about the traxxas max slash um I don't know if, if I should get, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty up there investment. I'm going to have to sell a couple things, right? But I think just for the channel, um, I don't want people to think I'm like an electric hater, but the reality is I prefer Nitro, as you might all expect, obviously, right now, you know. But the thing is, the Slash name alone has a ton of history. So I think it would be a great idea if I got the Mac Slash and compared it to the other four Slashes I have. Right, because like no one's gonna do that. Nobody has all those other slashes or short course trucks or the Hobeo uh, short course truck that I have. Like nobody has that. I have a shit ton of short course trucks. Okay, Al Casa got a team associate over there. He's gonna like come over with one day. You know, I told him that. All right, we got ourselves over here. 
Uh, Flaming Seagull, how you doing, man? Let me read Flaming Seagull's comment. I appreciate it. He goes, yo, man, just got back into the hobby and was searching Nitro RC and found you. Love your videos, man. I appreciate it. Uh, please become a subscriber if you're not. Everyone here in the chat is really nice. Um, you know, we don't allow, like, jerks in here usually. Um, but, you know, if they're here, they usually understand it's not a place to be a jerk and they, like, bounce. It's fine. But, you know, there's going to be some of them. It's, it's inevitable. All right, everybody. I'm going to wait till about three more people show up here in the stream. I want to hit 80. I know there's, like, other streams going on right now. There's a KGM5512 stream right now. Um, unfortunately, we kind of, like, do it at the same time. It's no big deal. It happens, right? But it is what it is. Okay, we're over 80. Are you guys ready to open her up? Okay. All right. What's up, Dylan Siebert? How you doing? All right. You guys ready? All right. Okay. I can't tell you guys exactly what it is. I'm going to open up the box. I mean, if I told you, it wouldn't be a secret, right? Because, like, then people would just, like, show up and, and, like, leave or something. I don't know. But, you know, that's kind of how it is. People, obviously, this is not the Max Slash. It's way smaller than the Max Slash. All right, let's uh, let's open her up. I'm not here to waste your time, guys. I'm here to uh, make a nitro great again, one way or another. All right. You ready? <laughs> Damn, this tape is strong. All right. There's some sickening tape over here. I thought I had that one. I didn't have that one. <laughs> this tape is strong. Damn it. Some sickening tape. Okay. Damn. Promise y'all I go to the gym, but you can't beat a tape. You guys saw that Mythbusters episode where they hung up, I think it was a Ford Taurus with uh, four plies of duct tape. They, it took four plies of duct tape, or was it two? You guys remember that? What's up, Jay-Z for days, man? How you doing? Every time I see Jay-Z for days, I think of uh, the, 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 the rapper, Jay-Z. 99 problems. I got most of them. Okay. All right. Yeah, Mighty Mike, I'm not going to be beating your boxes anymore because, like, to be honest with you, people aren't ready for my style of humor, really. Um, I'm going to, like, tone it down. They're just not ready for my style of humor. Uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's quite unfortunate. The world wants to see Biden reelected, even though he's, like, the world's worst president. You understand what I'm competing against right now? It's, it's, it's not even rational, man. Okay. I want to trade a Joe's today, like, a pound of salmon was like $14.99, okay? I, 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 a pound of salmon, $14.99. Walk into, walk into Domino's today. They, they, they freaking don't even walk up and say hello to you, man. They don't even walk up and say hi. I, st I stood there for four and a half minutes before they acknowledged me. Sickening. All right, Judge Joe, thank you, man. All right. But William Girl goes, 99 nitros and I need one more. That's true, man. Make it 100. You have more problems than Jay-Z. Okay, you guys ready? I'm going to take off, remove the bubble wrap. Oh, what is that? That is what you call a sickening Kyosho DRT. Okay, DRT. Uh, I'm going to look up what it stands for because I kind of forgot, forgot. Let me see what it stands for. I had this article open about it. It's called the Desert Race Truck. So I'll take it out of here right now. Give me a second. The Kyosho Desert Race Truck. That's a sickening name, isn't it, everybody? That's right. Al Castro goes, dude. <laughs> All right. Dev goes hybrid for president. Well, Dev, I'll have you know, back in college, I was vice president. Okay. Uh, it was pretty good. I, I liked campaigning, actually. All right. Everybody, you see that? Tara Curry appreciates it. So let me take it out of the box here. There's really nothing else in here. Ah. Kyosho DRT. Now, the question is, what year was this released? Captain Pugwash, what's going on? Goes, this channel needs more one fifth scale gas RCs. Oh uh, man, I have like, I have like about six of them, to be honest with you. I mean, I have like a lot of videos. Uh, I am working on a couple of fifth scale gas uh, vids right now. But the thing is, with, with the gas RCs, you know, um, there's a lot of liability when you run them. People get pissed off with the noise sometimes. So it, it's not that easy. To run a Nitro is actually much easier. Uh, I was just speaking to, you know, a viewer right here, Michael Zatari, about, you know, gas versus Nitro today. 
And, you know, if you guys are interested in this conversation, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about it. Basically, we were talking about gas versus nitro um, and, like, liability involved and, like, easiness. So, obviously, with a gas RC, you need a kill switch, right? With a nitro, almost always what happens if you have a runaway, thing, like, flips over and shuts down on its own. It's pretty much almost always what happens. It flips over and you're good. Uh, they do make kill switches for nitros, but, like, they're a gimmick. It basically just pinches your fuel line and you will... It's kind of, like until you run out of fuel, right? It'll take like six seconds if your uh, low speed needle is tuned correctly. So, Kyosho DRT. Take a look at the bottom of the chassis. I will take the shell off in a little bit. Obviously, it has uh, a good amount of use, guys, a good amount of use. The wheels look okay. This is a 10 scale short course truck. And in fact, I honestly love this segment. I, I love it. There's Nothing other than Traxxas left in this segment. So if you're looking to get a 10 scale short course truck, guys, look at the links in the description to this video. I put a couple of the short course trucks. So thank you for that channel donation there for the new 3D printer from Tarek Curry. I appreciate that, man. Um, I'm gonna do a video later on, on the 3D printer and like talk about RC parts. But to be honest with you, uh, the learning curve with the 3D printer if you guys haven't seen that, I could show it to you right now. So special thank you for that from Terra Curry. I'll show you just the 3D printer, kind of like what it is right now. So I have some filament here on top. This is nylon. Uh, this spool is actually fairly expensive, about $33 right here. Uh, printing nylon is, is, is fairly difficult. So um, what they don't tell you when you're shopping for a 3D printer is that the regular cheap filaments are trash, all right? No, I don't have any next to me right here. But the regular cheap filaments, they're they're basically for models, right? The TPU, which uh, I mean the PLA, PLA, that's like a for, for modeling. So for instance, I uh, printed a body post. You guys might, might have seen this already. Printed a body post here with PLA. Now, it prints very good. Um, you could print at a low temperature, but the problem is this is more of an aesthetic part. It's not really a functional part. I mean, I guess I can mount it on an RS4 and go try to flip it or something, you know, but I am experimenting with multiple materials. I also printed one with, uh, this is PETG, polyethylene tetra something. I forgot the name. It's basically a different kind of plastic. So the PETG, it's harder to print. It sticks to the bed really poorly. You have to print it at a higher temperature. And um, basically, it took me like like five prints before I even got this terrible looking body post out. Um, the rest of this stuff I'll, I'll cover later. It's not really about the 3D printer right now. Okay, so let's stick to the topic. Let me see what you guys are saying. Um, Flaming Seagull goes print with a TPU. So, TPU is this. Uh, for everybody that wants to know, this is an air filter housing. I printed with TPU. It's very soft. It's actually perfect material for air filters. And... Um, you know, some of you that think, well, this material, it's going to melt on the engine, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to melt, right? It's not going to melt. This prints at like 240 C, which is like 500 something Fahrenheit. Like there's no engine that's going to get to 500 Fahrenheit. It's, it's just not going to happen, right? All right, everybody. Enough jibber jabber. Are we ready to take a look at the DRT, the desert race truck? Um, let me just read a couple of the things about it as we keep going. Uh, you guys might find interesting. I have some facts here, okay? All right, let, let's get down to business. Now, the condition, we'll take a look at the condition. I haven't actually checked myself yet, guys, but we will take a look at it. It's a 0.18 GXR engine. Sounds like a motorcycle engine, right? Well, what's that motorcycle that they make? The, the G, GSR? No, that's an Acura. GRX? There's some motorcycle with like something, I don't know. Uh, uh, Jay-Z for days goes, what do you use for spur gears? So I did a lot of research on the 3D print material. This is the one I printed with um, nylon. So the, the thing is with nylon, it, you need an enclosed printer. If you noticed, my printer is open, right? So I have no like um, housing on it. Basically this kind of filament, it warps when it's not in the controlled temperature setting of uh, well, warmer than room temperature, basically. So, but nylon is what you want, right? Now, some people have asked me, what about Durlin, right? Durlin, Schumacher, they use Durlin gears. In fact, the gears in a T-Max, the gears of the two-speed T-Max and the Revo, they are Durlin as well. The Durlin is 
A plastic that is considered an engineering grade plastic. It is, first of all, the filament is super expensive. It's like triple the price of like this filament that I'm using right now. Um, and you need pretty much like a thousand dollar printer to print it, right? It prints at a very high temperature. This printer can't even go like 80% of that temperature. So it's basically trash. Okay, let me see what you guys are saying. Uh, Jibber Jabber is that drifter guy. <laughs> Oh, have I been watching him goes Earl Moorhead? No, I, I, I really haven't. Um, okay, let's get down to the Kyosho, everybody. Let me set up, and we will take the body off. I'm not sure the condition of this chassis. Let's, uh, let's take a look. Yeah. So if you guys want to ask me any more 3D printer questions, I'll give you like, you know, honest, truthful advice. It's not as easy as people think it is, right? So basically your first printer that you get will mostly be um, junk. But it's uh, valuable to learn on, but I do wish I did buy another printer. Let's, let me get set up here. One second there, guys. Got to adjust the lighting. All right. Everybody could see okay? As long as you can see okay, I'm happy. All right. William Quick goes, I hate long antennas, man. Yeah, this is, you know, old school AM. This is 2009. So, honestly, like, F uh, 2.4 gigahertz was already kind of a thing. What's up there, HPI Savage? How you doing? Happy to see you here. All right, 10 scale Kyosho DRT, which is desert race truck. I guess short course truck was taken, so they called it a desert race truck, right? We could see it had a sickening GoPro mount here on top. That means somebody had a good time. They had a good time. What's up there, V1? Happy to see you here, man. Uh, Wes Hobbies, how are you? A uh, good comment there from Wes Hobbies goes, you could build a uh, build a box for your printer. So the thing is, mine is really missing a lot of uh, functionality. I don't even have, but if, if you're interested, uh, here's like what some of the prints look. This is PLA. You know, it, it did have an error right here. It didn't finish this loop. Um, filter looks pretty good. It, you know, you could easily put a piece of foam in there and you, it's very, very usable. It's not going to come off. You don't need any zip ties uh, around the, the base there. But the thing is, I don't have Wi-Fi connectivity. You really need Wi-Fi connectivity. I wind up editing prints like the STL files all the time. All right, let's take the body off. Take a look inside. Thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate it. And uh, as Cash Murray says, Earl is cool, y'all. Very helpful to a lot of folks. I agree. And uh, I'm honored he's even on my channel, you know. All right. We do some different type of content, but... You know, I don't want people to think I hate electric RCs. That's, that's just not the case. Uh, I just prefer nitro, right? But anyways, what's up there? Hey, wire. All right. Let's uh, take off the shell. And we're looking at some uh, 2009 Kyosho. I'm going to tell you something, guys. These are uh, very low frills cars, right? Just because it's a Kyosho don't mean it's like a state-of-the-art uh, worldwide racer. Uh, although Kyosho had many race chassis, the V1 Triple R, the V1R, uh, they're also eight scale chassis. This one, it's on the lower end, so to say. All right, all aspects RC, what's up, man? So let's check out suspension, see how it is out of the box. Well, the box I took it out of at least. It is totally stock. Let's just start with totally stock, 0.18 engine. You know what I'm thinking, everybody? Al Casa goes, cooling head is crazy. Al Casa, you know what I'm thinking, man? This looks perfect for cooking a negan. This is actually better than the OS. I think we're going to make that happen if this engine runs. Nitro RC and electric goes. Reminds me of the DBX chassis. Yes, uh, I think you remember I might have shown it on this channel a couple times. I do have a brand new in-box DBX. If you guys want to see, I'll show it to you later, but it's kind of in the private area right now, you know, super, super private. Um, hiding it so it doesn't get taxed for being super dope. Now, suspension, the shocks are, I would say... A little over dampened, a little too tough for this chassis. It's a lightweight chassis. It's not very heavy in the front. 
same story, I would think. This is a 10 scale, not not a 8 scale guy. It's a 10 scale chassis. Personally, I love the 10 scales. I love them. Now, stock pipe. Kyosho has uh, a little bit of the weird geometry going on. You know, why did they use a header like that? They could have had a nice high flow header that pretty much every HPI, even Red Cat and Exceed was using during this time period, right? You know what I'm curious about? Before I even check out the engine, let me see if one of the printers, I, one of the elements I printed will fit the air filter. Let's just see. I'm not sure, but this, this housing might be a little bit small. If it is, I'm gonna have to res resize it and reprint it. In fact, things go well, I might even do it on the stream, I don't know. So it might not be, it, yeah, it doesn't fit this one. This, this is too small. No, this doesn't fit. This is for like the small block HPI engines, uh, Pro 15, it's not gonna fit this one. It's too big, too small rather. So I'm gonna have to print one that fits it because these are actually pretty unique size of a carb. That's assuming the engine isn't dead. So I think we're counting our chickens before before hens. How's that story go? You're ordering your Chinese food before paying, right? Oh, I do that all the time. All right, guys. So what's up there, Texas Hill man? Happy to see you here. He goes watching from a concert. Bro, are you at like the Grateful Dead concert? Where are you at? Metallica maybe? I know you like some sickening music. Tell us where you're at. Let's take a look at this side. I'm thinking we're gonna have to open the engine. So, one of the things I really, really like about this, you guys tell me, uh, some of the elements that you appreciate. And I'll hold it kind of like this so we can get a good close-up view. <coughs> I love the slide carb. I think slide carbs on the small block engines are very nice. Uh, the G3.0, right, on the WR8 slide carb setup. A very great setup in my opinion. What else? Um, good point there from Jason Brawley. He goes, at least the high-speed needle not ran all the way in. Good observation, man. That's true. Sometimes when you get these with the high-speed needle like all the way in, it's bad news bears for you right there. Uh, air Fuel tank is actually a large capacity. Spring is very good. O-ring looks really good. So these do use a plastic spur gear in the middle, and it does appear to have a center diff. Yeah, it, it definitely has a center diff. Let me see about steering. Slop is very minimal. I would say very minimal. I um, think we're going to have to probably clean this engine. Let me see what happens if I pull this cord. What do you guys think is going to happen? Whoa, that's bad news right there for me. So far, we got nothing. Monty Kriska, bro, thank you. He goes, hit that like button. That would be appreciated if possible. So, so far, we got nothing. So, these systems... You know, this doesn't actually mean it's dead. These use kind of like the coil um, off crank pulse starter, similar to the Hobeo. Um, Erbor goes that Kung head has a huge center hole, yes. And we're going to cook eggs in it. That's what we're going to do later. Throttle return spring is still here. That's a nice touch. Uh, a lot of this stuff is plastic. These were kind of like low entry RTR models. Don't think they were like super high end. In fact, a, uh, a regular Slayer would destroy this, right? The Slayer is light years ahead. And if you're looking to get a short course, I put a link for the Slayer in the description to this video. So you guys go check it out. It's real good, trust me. You're, you're gonna have a good day. This is, I would say the plastics quality is really good. Now I'm thinking that this is actually nylon, right? So it's basically the same as a spur gear I printed. Uh, don't worry about the color. The color is like whatever. I might have to shave some of it to put a, you know, a bearing in there, but whatever. Um, I'm thinking that these parts are actually nylon. So this should have a similar quality. Now, the back of this spur is not very good. If you take a look at the spur I printed, but I'm thinking this is like the file. The infill on this side is just not very good. That's what it is. This is the file. Like, you see the way that it's, um, like, layered over there around the screw holes? It's not very good. That's, that's just how the file was. That's not really the printer's fault. Also, it looks like the infill... That was used on the gears in the file. It should have been edited. This is not 100% infill. You could see little holes around the gears. Now, spur gears like this should be 100% infill. This is definitely not 100% infill. Right? Anyways, we'll, we'll continue, everybody. Oh, we got Pitbull air-cooled here and hoser here one again, once again. 
All right. Let's, um, I'm going to ask you guys what you want me to do. Take the engine out or what? So, because we basically got nothing. Oh my God, look at that tiny clutch bell. That is a small clutch bell right there. Wow. That's actually pretty interesting. Look how small the clutch bell is. So this car definitely had a lot of a lot of runtime, right? It's not a low runtime car. This is a high runtime car. So the wheels are really good. So a lot of these, you know, 0.18 engines, they don't really have that crazy power to kill the wheels. I'm a little bit happy about this. I, I like these style wheels. Notice the wheel nuts. This is not like a size I'm familiar with, not like a regular wheel nut size. It appears to be a proprietary Kyosho size wheel. Or I don't know. All right, so obviously electronic wise, we're gonna have to rip the radio gear out. So why don't I just like start doing that now, everybody? All right, if you haven't hit the thumbs up, uh, it would really mean a lot to me if you could. And please guys, let's all send some positive thoughts, positive wishes to our friend Nitro RC and Electrics. Um, He's dealing with, you know, a life situation now. Eventually, statistically speaking, all of us will be dealing with one sooner or later. And it's nice to uh, to know that people care. So if we could possibly send them a little bit of positivity uh, along the way, that would be great. All right, let me take this out. All right, pretty janky looking radio box. I'm not sure if it was like supposed to be this way. But it's pretty, pretty, it's, it's on the janky side. Uh, let's take out this right here. Yeah, electronics-wise, I'm not too worried about, guys, because I will... I'm just going to run a fly sky. Wow, look at this setup over here. Actually, before I take it out, this part... I'm not totally sure. I don't know if this should be this way. Take a look at this. As uh, You know, I just want to demonstrate to you how it is from, like, me just taking it out. So if the throttle is opening, this collar appears to be very, very close to the to the battery box. Unless it's already at the end of its travel. How is it going to open it? Oh, I guess it's okay. It's literally rubbing against this area. Unless this part should have been flipped upside down. I mean upside uh, upwards. Do you guys see what I'm saying? So when the throttle is being opened, it looks like it's literally rubbing the radio box. Maybe the tolerances are just so low that it looks funny to me. Uh, it doesn't look that good. All right, Al Casa goes looks like the same linkage setup as the FW06. Yeah, well, the same slide linkage. Oh, what the hell is that? It looks like somebody has glued the servo horn over here. That's why is there glue on this? It, it does appear to be glued. Maybe this is put incorrectly. I am thinking this should be on the top. Yeah, JC for days goes. You can flip it. Oh, we got boosted RC, bro. Thank you, man. Uh, happy to see you here again. One of my good friends, Booster RC. You guys will see more videos of him soon. Uh, he owns nitros. He owns gas. And he gets great fuel economy in his real car. Because that's what matters. That's why he can buy more nitros, everybody. All right. We're going to continue. I'm thinking, Booster RC, if you're free this Sunday, um, Dan and I are going to be at the RC track, man. He told me he's bringing a Kyosho. And I told him, I'll bring the heat gun. Okay. And, and I guess, like, other things. Probably donuts or something. I don't know. All right. We're going to continue, everybody. Yeah. Michael and Satara goes, looks like the link, it should be flipped upside down. Yeah. It doesn't appear that this should be on the bottom. It looks like it should be on the top. Anyways, we'll continue with that later. William Quick goes, just bought a Minty Jado. Uh, RC Hobbies SOS, man. How are you? I saw your recent video there with the Savage. It was pretty incredible. I'm um, sorry I didn't leave you a comment, man. But I want you to know I do watch it. And um, you're doing what you can for the Savage Gang out there. Oh, Pitbull Air Cool, bro. Thank you. Couple bucks towards Taco Bell or whatever. We'll use it towards the printer, I'm thinking. So I'll talk more about that later. But basically, I'm going to need a new printer. Um, you know. There's a learning curve with printers. And basically, the first printer you buy is almost useless. But mine prints okay. But it's not a very good printer. Let's do this. I think we're going to open up the receiver box. You know what? Let's, let's just keep the electronics in here because it's a little easier for me to work on. And we'll take the engine out. I'll, I'll do the electronics part later. Or else it's going to be too tough for me to like... It's going to be wires everywhere. Man, this is some real janky radio box setup over here. Look at like the way this is cut. I don't know why it's like that. Eh, whatever. All right, let's, let's continue, everybody. Michael Sucha, what's up, man? 
Yeah, notification squad don't like me no more, you know? I don't know what to tell you, man. All right. So, uh, I guess since this is the current issue right here, we do have to get to the engine assembly, maybe clean it. Um, so these systems are coil off crank. Uh, I think they're called the, like the Hobeo systems, like the COPS coil off crank. So technically, the one-way bearing isn't, um, it's, it's not like a regular one-way bearing. So I guess, guys, we're going to have to like dig into it, right? What else can we do? You know, I wouldn't mind 3D printing a filter for this, like right now, like a filter housing like this. But we'll get down to that. I, I, I would have to do a filament swap if I were to 3D print uh, one of these. Um, I think Booster RC needs a couple of these, right? So I know you run the small block engines, like the old HPIs. I'm going to give you a couple of these. I'll print like maybe two or three overnight. I'll give you a couple. But it's one of those things where it's like literally a lot of trial and error with this printer stuff. Because the files, the files are freaking all incorrect. I wind up printing one file and it's incorrect. Like for instance, take a look at this. These are a couple of um, head protectors I printed, right? Uh, I, I, I must have went through like six of them. So basically, uh, forget about this. I have to like clean this up. This uh, nitro head protector, not for this engine. But, you know, whatever. It's not for this engine. I could downsize it. This file is definitely incorrect. Because, like, the lip, the lip that goes over here, it's supposed to go around the, the head, it's too damn small. Like, this lip is too damn small. Unbelievable. So, basically, th this print is useless. I'm going to have to design one. All right, let's see what we got with this engine. It's dirty. Let's, uh, I guess, take it apart. Oh, the typical Kyosho screw job, as they like to say. Phillips head screws. Let's, uh, let me get my proper screwdriver. See what you guys are saying. I'll read your comments. Yeah, yeah. Mr. RC, bro, no problem. You can message me anytime, you know? So probably Sunday, I will be at the RC track. It's a warm day. Uh, by the way, guys, hey, Melissa, can you bring my GoPro camera, please? My Hero 8, the broken one. I want to show them the GoPro Hero 8. You know, sometimes when you're out on the path of um, engine recordings, you break stuff, you know? All right, so let's remove this. It's very similar to the way actually Kyosho mounts today with the USA-1, the three engine screws. It's, what that means is good luck finding anything that mounts. Yeah, Melissa, can you bring my GoPro Hero 8? I want to show the Nitro Gang what, what, what went down. All right, let's do it. Let's hope they come out. Now we'll just heat it up. It'll be fine. Okay, so far, good. We got one loose. We got the second one loose. All right, let me see. We got a question here from Jay-Z for Days Ghost. Is that big parking lot behind the TV or behind the RC track good for 110 on road? To be honest with you, that parking lot is really rough, man. That's why you really don't see me running there much. Uh, the RC track, the small oval, is okay for 10 scales. You know, they're okay for 10 scales. But that other track, uh, the, well, it's not really a track. The parking lot, it, it's really coarse. It's like super, super coarse. All right, let's remove these screws. At least they're not stripped. That's a good sign. You do have some gear mesh amount uh, adjustment. Uh, Cash Murray. Um, oh, hold on. Drop one of the screws. Oh, man. Hold on. Drop one of the screws on the floor. I don't want to have to. Okay, I got it. I'm going to take the head off first. I kind of just want to remove the engine. Yo, Melissa, where is... The dead GoPro. So there's also like kind of a learning curve with the GoPros. I'm probably going to have to do the GoPro trading program. All right. We have a couple linkages here. Let's just get to the linkages. Interesting pipe mount directly from the side. Usually it's like a set screw. It should be on the couch or no, no, the GoPro should be where I have my car keys. You know, the car keys, special location, can't tell people. What's up there, Eric's RCs? Well, let's flip it around. Basically, I just want to take the engine out so I can at least clean a little bit of it. It's always a good idea to like just clean it when you're working on this stuff.
yeah, the wheels are pretty good. And they're in good condition. These are original. This this chassis is 100% stock, everybody. 100% it's. All right, you know what I'll do? Probably just gonna take this off with, with some pliers. Yeah, the linkage, the throttle linkage. I don't wanna mess with the servo linkage. Oh, well, that's harder than I expected. Okay, there we go. Servo linkage is off. What else we got? We just got like some fuel line over here going down. Exhaust. And that's it. Engine should come right out. Ba-boom, there you go. So it's dirty. I'm gonna just like clean up the sides a little bit. So yeah, Kyosho uses this super, well, you know, I don't wanna say custom, cause custom ain't even good. Unique three screw setup. It does the job, but you know, it basically makes putting on anything else almost impossible. All right, Melissa's gonna bring me my uh, GoPro right now and I'll show you guys the situation. Give me a second. So what's up there, Woogie Nitro Man? All right, thanks for the GoPro. All right, guys, are you ready to see a GoPro murder? Yeah, there we go. It's pretty bad. The whole lens is totally cracked. Um, I was using it like this for like one video, but now the glass has shifted and now actually it's like pretty much in the view of, of the lens. So it's pretty much dead right here. My old Hero 8, guys. I don't really care about the back screen, but it's pretty much dead. Let me see. It still works, but you're going to get like pretty much artifacts in the video. You don't see it here that much, but if you take a look, I'll show you, hold on, hold on everybody. Yeah, it's pretty much a big ouch, bro, I know. It's hard to see, but on the bottom, there's going to be like uh, an artifact that you, can, you can't see, because right now the camera lens has like shifted, but when I went outside, the whole front like shifts. Yeah, it's basically really bad. So uh, you guys want to take a guess which RC killed this camera? It's pretty bad. I was pretty upset about it, but whatever. The thing is, I do have a newer GoPro, but you really want you really want the 8, in my opinion. The 8 is smaller than the 9 and up. So I do have the 11. I've been using the 11 now. The problem is the 11 is really not a, a small camera. It's a big camera, and it's tough to even use it on an RC onboard. Oh, thank you for that channel gift membership from Hoser1. And it looks like Jacob R., has become a channel member. Congratulations, Jay Kabar, man. Wogi Nitro goes, I like the 11. I have the 11 too, man. Um, but you know, for like onboard, this camera is actually much smaller than the old one. Uh, HPI, Savage, see you later. Thank you for stopping by. You guys, uh, if you want to go to his channel too, he's also a YouTube creator, HPI, Savage, along with Wogi Nitro. You guys might already know that. Um, anyway, so basically dead. Let's see what we have on it. It's pretty good interface. It actually works quite fantastic. Let's see. Oh, what is that? Let's scroll. Yeah, you see right here recorded with like a little bit of artifacts over there on the screen on the left side. It's basically dead. Well, let's see what we have on this so far. Oh yeah, this just went down. So if you guys see a Nitro Rush video, you'll know the camera was recorded with, okay? Sickening. Nitro rushes back. What do you think about that? All right. Anyways, let's uh, let's turn this off. What's up, D DJ Cool V? All right. Let's get back to the engine. Man, the chassis is pretty dirty, but it's fine. Let me just clean it up a little bit with some wipes, and we'll uh, take off the head. Obviously, it's gonna need a full cleanup. This one is beyond. Dirty, but it had a fun, good life. What's up, V1? All right. Whoa, this thing is... It's... So I do want to open up some of it just to take a look at the intricate Kyosho starting mechanism because really not like a typical one-way bearing. But I don't want my hands to be dirty while I'm doing this because it's going to be all over my computer, you know? Uh, Kelly Adams, how are you, man? He goes, what kind of chassis is this? I just came here. This is a Kyosho DRT, which is a desert race truck, basically a short course truck. It was Kyosho's way of saying, we're more sickening than you, okay? And um, uh, I would say I 85% I agree. What's up, Pandaphobia? Yeah, 85% agree. So honestly, I, I'm a big fan of the Kyosho small block engines. This is the GXR18. 
Uh, Eugene Pony there earlier said it was a reference to a motorcycle. I don't remember reading which one he said. Maybe Kawasaki? Eugene Pony, which one? Oh, thank you for that channel donation from Nitro and Electrics RC. All right. Always a channel supporter and just a person who also loves Nitros, which is, which is hard to come by these days now, you know? But it's fine, it's fine. So let me clean this up a little bit. Obviously, I'm going to have to wash this hardcore later on. So special thank you again to Nitros RC and Electric, formerly known as Carlo, although that is his, still his real name. Um, but we all have avatars, you know what I mean? Avatars. I have one when I go on the subway. It's like, don't talk to me, bro. Today, today, one, I go on a subway. You guys want to know what happened on the subway story today? Let me make sure nothing gets in there. Today on the subway, this woman gets up, right? This woman, she's like this, she was reading a book, like a normal looking woman, doesn't look like, you know, in any kind of weird position in life or anything like that. She gets up and tries to go sit next to these two people that clearly don't have any room for her to sit between. Like, it was very obvious. And the guy's like, well, are you like trying to sit here? So he like gets up. And lets her sit there. Nothing wrong with that. But like, she was already in a seat. Why did she get up in order to sit somewhere where she obviously couldn't even fit? That's part of today's subway story. Right. Yeah. Kelly Adams goes very neat. Not many short course trucks left. I missed the Slayer Pro. Bro, I put a link for the Slayer Pro in the video. I fly. How you doing? He goes crazy subway stories. <laughs> yeah, right? Dude, there's always a subway story. Like, literally every day. Um... You know, the amount of people literally not paying for the subway now, they're just like walking over the turnstile and just jumping it is insane. I see it every day. Of course, if I were to do it, I would get in trouble, you know. But, hey, listen, you can't use excuses like they did it, I can do it. You use that with the cops, they're going to tell you, how about you go to jail too? Oh, how about you pay a fine? Yeah, th then you'll have excuses. All right. I think we could remove the pull starter. <sighs> Let's Let me spin this over. Is it seized? You know what? I think it's actually seized. So, bearing seems a little average. Oh, oh no, it's a spinner. Okay, so what's my diagnosis, everybody, now that I've spun over the, the flywheel? Do you think we have engine life left? Is there any engine life left, is the question right now. By the way, guys, is the video quality okay? I'll, uh, I can wait and refresh it a little bit. It's definitely a spinner. Definitely a spinner. Okay. Michael Knight, how are you, man? Every time Michael Knight comes here, I want to. I have the urge to buy a Trans Am. Unbelievable. Okay. Uh, so, uh, compression is not awesome. It's qu it's quite 85% uh, gone. Let's uh, open up the engine there. and the, Well, not really the engine, but more like the post-order assembly. I want to I see why this isn't catching. So, that shouldn't be going on. That should not be going on. Yeah, best fidget spinner goes William Quick. You're on the right path, man. Okay, we need a different driver. The quality okay, everybody? If it's not, I can wait a little bit here. Yeah, oh, oh overworld goes, Walmart's good for a few laughs. The thing is, yeah, it is, but then like, you know, you get online and then you get a cashier that looks like they're, they don't want to be there. Oh, man, the screw is actually kind of tight in there. We got over 115 people. I appreciate you being here. For everyone just joining, this is a rare Kyosho DRT, which is a 10 scale, small block, single speed, short course truck. They call it a desert truck. But let's not lie to ourselves, okay? Oh, man, that's a big-ass screw right there for a pull starter. So those are pretty much proprietary screws. You got to be careful not to lose them. They go through this entire pull start assembly here. Uh, yeah, iFly goes, his buddy has a good couple stories there from being a greeter at Walmart, I can imagine. I can imagine. I think New York City as a whole has a, in itself is just a big ass story. Uh, this screw is actually, I think, no, it's the same screw. All right, let's take this out. The post order assembly. Got to be careful. But this post order assembly is kind of unique. So this part locks up. It has to like kind of move, I think. Mm. Interesting assembly here. 
let me move this. I think this part has to, it interlocks somehow with this assembly. This part is metal and part is not metal. I think this part has to come out. It somehow, it somehow holds you. I've worked on one of these before. I kind of forgot how they're assembled. Let's, um, where's my big screwdriver I had? Give me a second, everybody. Yeah, I think this part has to lift up. What I need is the exploded parts view. Because this part doesn't just um, go up on its own like that. I think it locks in. And you can't remove the pull starter. You see how it's like it's supposed to come up like that? Yeah. Freaking Kyosha is always intricate. Intricate design. You can't even take the pull starter off. Yeah, Kelly Adams goes, you need to get in the plastic to take off uh, this part, right? That's what, I, that's what I expected. So this part is like holding this half part with the metal part. That's pretty much what I expected. So let me see. Razor. So our archery goes, what if I took the handle off? So if I pulled the handle up, really nothing differently happens. Let me just keep it to the side. You see, even even like basic Kyosha pull starter assembly is like a situation. It should just like slide up. I think it's just seized too much. But yeah, Kyosho pull starter is not like any other pull starter, you know? Yeah, super sickening is what it is. It's coming up a little bit. It basically holds it in together, kind of acts like a third screw which is really annoying in my opinion. Let me see if I can twist this up a little bit. All right, it's coming off, it's coming off. Yeah, it's coming off slowly. Yeah, it's coming off. You can see we already have some separation here. It's like the space shuttle. Okay, so it's not a screw on. I'm twisting it. It's definitely not. It's tough. Okay, it's coming along. Whoa, Pitbull Air Cool goes there, set screw. There, there definitely is no set screw. Um, let me do this here. Definitely no set screw, just Kyosho assembly process, you know? Some sickening stuff over here. <laughs> no, not easy yet. So let me just pry it up again. You see, that's why like a lot of times when you buy these things, the pull starters are all, are all dead. Because unless you're careful, you're toast. Okay, I think we got it almost. Still need to get this moving on. Yeah, Benjamin goes, it presses on. So I'm trying to lift it. Okay, oh, finally got it. Oh, there we go. Finally got it, everybody. See that? Yeah, it's just pressed on, but it was tough for me to get it out. Clean this a little. Whoa, sickening. You could easily just snap that part. Okay, finally, Ooh, we got the part right there. Ooh. Okay, so now the system should just come off. Let's see, so this pull start, I gotta make sure nothing falls out funny from it. Okay. No, that's not a good idea. All right, still need to put a thin shaft in there somehow. I gotta get a thin, let me get a, uh, a hobby knife. We'll put a hobby knife in between there. Some Kyosho genius, you know? Okay, pull the cord in. Just want to slide it off correctly. 
I could see it right there. Okay, we got it. We got it. Okay, there it goes. Yeah, this pulse starter system is uh, unlike the kind of which anyone has ever seen. Let me just make sure this doesn't recoil incorrectly. Okay. Okay, it still spins freely. Okay, the spring is fine. All right. I just didn't want the loop to come out and have the, the capture part of the spring at the end uh, break. So I'll, I'll wash this completely separately. So yes, basically this part, the top part, snaps onto the metal housing. And that's why it was so difficult to remove it. Pretty, um, I wouldn't say a terrible design, but a little, a little useless in my opinion. They could have just used one more screw, you know, or like three screws. Uh, I fly goes. Never seen that type yet. Kyosho does things the way they do things, which is different. What's up, Lucas? Stalk up. Uh, Terracurri goes, it's very durable. That is true. I have actually never seen these broken. Like, the post order assembly itself, I have never seen them broken, right? This one is not broken. The post order is fine. Uh, but what's going on internally, we will, we will see. Let me see what's going on here. All right, yeah, so the one-way bearing. This is not actually the one-way bearing. This is just what goes inside the post order system. The one-way bearing is internal on this engine. So we would have to remove the back plate to get to the one-way bearing. You guys want me to remove the back plate or what? Go ahead. Tell me in the chat here or the head. I think I probably want to remove the back plate uh, to begin with. What do you think? Back plate removal or what? You tell hybrid does. We're going to make this nitro great again, guys. But it's just a matter of how long it'll take. But it's fine. All right. All right. People want the back plate removed. All right. So small Phillips head screws. Uh, the screwdriver I'm using is pretty good. It's an old Duratrax driver. Well, I'm glad I was able to do this on live stream because I, I, I pretty much knew people would never have seen a weird pull starter or assembly like this. All right. Let's, uh, let's do it. Lucas, talk up. How you, uh, how you doing? Okay. Just out here trying to mess with a Kyosho, you know? Oh, man. That screw is super tight. But it's not stripped. The good news is it has a uh, good grip there with the driver. That's the good news. Okay. Yeah, these are like similar to the HPI small screws they use. All right. Rock and roll the RC, man. Thank you for that. Reminding people to like... And of course, you know, if you're not a subscriber, like, what's going on? Let me clean this up a little bit. I don't want to have to remove it while it's all dirty. Appreciate you guys being here. I feel kind of bad, actually. I was in a stream earlier uh, over at KGM, but we just randomly happened to do it at the same time. But, you know, he's a person worth supporting. All right, Benjamin Martinez goes the same pull starter on the Kyosho Stadium Force. Yes, um, but I think you have a point fifteen, don't you? This is a point eighteen. Uh, okay, let's make sure nothing is stripped. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use a different part of the screwdriver here. Hold on a second. Let me use a different screwdriver, a bigger one, with a little more grip. What's up, Leghorn? Foghorn? I'm a Foghorn Leghorn. How you doing? Let's use this one. I trust this one. It has like a very good uh, grip. All right. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. Now, tonight, I will wash all of these parts in the sink with like soap and water. It'll be fine. Now, this engine already has low compression, guys. I want you to know that. It's not like it's 100% perfect. It's not, it's not perfect. But we are... At least trying to start it eventually. So I do need to make sure this system does work. Oh, this, this one's tough. This one's tough. Okay. Really slow. Threads loosen up a little bit. Okay. Okay, it's coming out. It's like the best screwdriver I ever bought at a Home Depot, Stanley. It was only like three bucks. Yeah, boosted RC goes, you still can't kill it. Let's hope, man. Let's hope. Well, 
as always, this stuff comes down to like cost benefit analysis. This is an engine that really, there's not much replacement for it because like, think about it. When you look at it, it's got the features of what's not made at all today. It, you know, a small block slide carb with side exhaust. I don't know any other engine that is like this. Well, the G3.0, but I'm not sure if this is a pilot shaft. You know, the G3.0 might be a fantastic fit for this, but then you will have to make custom mounts for the engine. So once again, you're gonna run into problems. Even if you think those elements are good, the damn engine mounts are totally unique. Okay, this one's good. This one's good too, it's coming out, everybody. Yep, our, our tree co goes, can't find a head button for my 2028 Dynamite, gotta buy a whole new engine. So, unfortunately, man, I think you left me a comment a while ago, right? I looked for that head button, I could not find it, dude. I looked everywhere for that head button. You know, RR Tree, if you click um, any of the video links right now at A Main, I have in the links right now any of them, Dynamite is selling them for like 105 bucks on, on uh, A Main. So, I, I that's sickening. Yeah. Yeah. I looked all over for that head button, too, man. Well, let's see what we got, guys. We got over 112 people here. Thank you all for stopping in. We got a sickening Kyosho engine issue. Can't talk too much. Okay. All right, uh, it doesn't look terrible. It's oiled, but there is some, um, I wouldn't say that's, you know, there's some minimal ruster, rust in there, but there is oil. It will need a full cleaning. Let's check out this one-way bearing system. Interesting setup. Notice that one way, it's like a big ass shaft in there. Hmm, interesting. So let me see how this works. So basically this would spin and the one-way bearing is internal in here yeah right now it's definitely slipping i think yeah interesting setup let me see how you take this apart i did this one time before so this is supposed to slide out i think yeah yeah oh yeah there's a mechanism like a little loop right there you guys see the little nub the nub so i think you're supposed to hold it let me clean this a little i'm gonna wash this all anyway so like uh, I'm obviously touching it with like dirty fingers right now, but uh, you know, I'm going to wash it anyway. So I'm not too worried about uh, that really. All right, so pretty sure what you do. Yeah, it's, it's really small. I'm gonna wash all this anyway. Pretty sure this is supposed to just slide out somehow. I did this before but it wasn't this bad. Mm, let me see, you know what? I should have done it on the engine. That's why I'm having this problem right now. Okay, so this part is supposed to just slide out. So it's, it's a weird setup. This is kind of like the retainer. I don't want to call it the retainer clip, but it's, it's really, it doesn't, it acts like that. Okay, we have to get this thing out to get the one-way bearing out. Okay, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. It's going to come off. You see that right there? I'm moving the pin. You guys watching this? I'm moving the pin. Ah, there it goes. And it pops off like that. It's basically like a half screw. And there's a pin inside that sticks out. You can't really get rid of it. It's just how it is. And it just screws on like that. It's just so, so like gummed up. It's an interesting setup. It's not like anything you've ever seen before, right? Guarantee you, that at least. All right, so this is out. This will all get washed. All these little parts will get washed. What about this? This should, I think, pop out. Yeah, oh no, yeah, this pin comes out. What am I talking about? This pin comes out too. So the pin on the pull starter shaft and the starter shaft. The, yeah, this is the pin on the starter shaft comes out. Doesn't look much different from like a wheel pin. So if you lose it, you can just basically get another one. So now we got the one-way bearing access. So there it is. It's internal. Can't even see any rollers in there. Uh, I don't know how internal that is. Hold on. I don't see any any rollers in there. 
Let me get up closer. You guys see any rollers in there? I don't see anything in there. It's smooth. So it must be somehow internal there. How does this work? So it goes like this. If it doesn't matter which side I'm putting it in, we're just testing it. How does this even work? Okay, so it seems to be spinning both ways, not catching in either direction. So where is the one-way bearing? Maybe there isn't one at all. It's a crank off pull starter system. So I think, oh, I think I got how it works. There is no one-way bearing. I'm pretty sure what happens is this loop, unless I'm incorrect, you guys could tell me, I'm pretty sure this is always inserted like that. What happens is this part, I think it's supposed to retract when it's on the pin and it's correctly on the pin. It retracts, and then when it doesn't, it pushes the, the pin. It grabs the pin, and then it goes back. So it's some kind of system that does that. It's, it's an intricate system. i got to read up on this a little bit. There does not appear to be a, an actual one-way bearing in here. Anybody an expert in these engines, or what? Yeah, Terracurra goes, there is no bearing. Yeah, there is no bearing. I was incorrect. It appears that when the pull starter engages, it grabs on and just spins it like that, right? Because there's a pin that's normally there. That's kind of how it works. So I'll, I'll wash all these parts. Um, obviously, I can't put them back in the engine at all right now. Let's take a look inside this one. Yeah, it's just a brass bushing. So we have very minimal compression. There's um, some rust there on the crank, but it's nothing like debilitating. Let me put my finger in there. Yeah. All right. So yeah, it's pretty tough. I can't even remove that uh, stuff with my finger. It's pr it's pretty jammed on. But all of this is going to be totally overhauled. New gasket, new everything. Let's take off the exhaust. I think while we're here. All right. Thank God. At least it's using metric screws. So I'll have all of these parts separate, and maybe tomorrow in a live stream we could assemble it. If you guys want, I could do that. Yeah, V1 here with a good comment. He goes, the, the spiral pushed the connecting part to the connecting rod. Uh, yeah, I pretty much understood that just after I saw it. You know, I did work on one of these. It was the car that I worked on was um, the one that Pitbull air-cooled won. Uh, the FW05, it actually had the same problem, but that one didn't have a pull starter. I, I meant the same engine setup, not problem. It didn't have a pull starter problem. That one worked perfectly fine. So I actually were, were, uh, was a little unfamiliar with this, which is fine. Can't be familiar, familiar with everything. Either way, all of this needs to be redone. These gaskets need to be replaced. This needs to be washed. Uh, probably wire brushed some of this part. Well, we'll do our best to repair it, you know? We'll do our best. Hopefully the clutch is okay. It sounds a little iffy on the inside. If you guys want, I can take a look at the clutch right now. You know, I think I should probably take a look at the clutch right now. Nothing's stopping me from doing that, you know? Unless it, it's totally seized on. In which case, I can't. Okay. Let me do this off video here. Well, one second there, guys. So I think we all saw an interesting Kyosho pull starter assembly. All right. We could definitely take off this part now. Lotus 420 goes weather for this weekend. Rampage with a chance of T-Max. I like that weather forecast, man. I got a chance of a uh, Kyosho V1 Triple R myself. Oh man, check that out. My arch nemesis, man. The needle bearing, the needle bearing. When they're good, they're good. When they're bad, they make you want to curse yourself out. 
Um, cloth shoes. I'm not going to touch any of this because this stuff is like real, real sickening. Let me see. Okay, clutch shoes seem pretty tight. I'm moving it right now. Aluminum clutch shoes. Aluminum shoes. Yeah. The springs are very good. I'm not going to mess with that. I'll clean it like as it is. It seems okay. Aluminum clutch shoes. That's pretty nice. Roller bearing looks okay. All right. Interesting thing. When I put this back on, it's definitely hitting the clutch bell now. I mean, not the clutch bell, the flywheel. It's definitely hitting the flywheel. How, how can that be? How can that be? There needs to be a washer on top of this needle bearing, I think. Although, yes, my arch nemesis. Look at all that dirt. This is from it hitting. Look at all that space. That washer was hitting the clutch belt the whole time that means it was shimmed incorrectly completely to begin with everybody i actually ran into the same problem with like kiyosha fox it was very very difficult to figure out i only solved the problem when i put in a traxxas clutch so this is all going to have to be washed this is a telltale style sign when it goes on that it's literally just sitting on that washer it was sitting on that washer the whole time Yeah, Kelly Adams goes, it's a pretty good use of the washer, uh, of the needle bearing rather. Yeah, because it's only a single speed. We don't have much side-to-side -side power. But the ironic part is Kyosho uses the same needle bearing setup on the USA-1. And those have two of these needle bearings. Two. So there, you know, when you have a three-speed clutch bell, you actually have a lot of side-to-side -side lateral forces. And it almost always winds up chewing your gears up. But that's what happens on the USA-1, everybody. So uh, be aware of that, right? There is an, a conversion for regular modern bearings. Uh, I did do it in the video one time. Damn, it fell off. All right. Anyways, I'll uh, clean this up anyway. But yeah, take a look at this washer. It's, it's honestly halfway, halfway killed. Mighty Mike goes, I would install flange bearings. That, that's my plan, dude. That's, that's actually my plan. Oh, we got KGM here. Uh, I was on his stream earlier, but had to, you know, this continue, go to my own. But guys, subscribe to KGM5512 and Lotus420. Okay, just do it. You, you can thank me tomorrow. Okay? So we got a Kyosho DR10. I mean, DR, DRT, which stands for Desert Race Truck, everybody. Just took a look at the clutch. The needles, uh, sorry, the springs seem adequate. This I'll just work on later. The engine I'll have to clean, you know, in a video. Notice this interesting setup. At first, I thought this was the, the mid-speed mid -speed needle, but it's not. It's just a regular low-speed needle, high-speed needle. This definitely makes it look like it's a mid-speed needle, but it's not. Just a regular needle. Sickening. All right, let me put this to the side. All of this is going to have to be washed, like, individually. Um, rings, how you doing? Yeah. Kelly Adams goes, time for a new washer. Unfortunately, man, you're right. And these are like kind of proprietary washers. They're not like a regular washer. Oh, KGM. Been a sickening fan and smelling what the Nitro Gang has been cooking for 13 months. Thumbs up to you, man. KGM just hit 1,000 subscribers on his channel. Um, and he's going to hit more, okay? Because he does great content. And he deserves it, all right? Now, let us continue. Let's take a look at the rest of the chassis here. You know, I guess after looking at the engine, it's uh, not that exciting, really. But it's what you got to do. Nitro Power, how are you? I think tonight I'm going to 3D print a larger scale air filter for this. So the regular 10 scale air filter, it, it doesn't fit on this carb opening at all. They're not even like the same size. As you could tell, I need to scale this up like maybe 25%. It's not the same size. Which actually does suck. Let's take a look at the chassis itself. Well, that stuff fell. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. 
it's a pretty mundane chassis really but like these these cars handle quite well and the reason is there's really not much in this segment with a center diff and a 10 scale type setup uh the drive shafts are on the very thin side in fact if you take a look there they're like super thin let me do a little cleaning i'm all out of my uh cleaning wipes so this is literally my last wipe right here, guys. I got no more wipes, just one wipe. I have to hit up the Dollar Tree tomorrow. Oh man, this thing is dirty. I think I'm gonna have to go like wash this in the sink. Overvolt, everything goes. How big is that compared to a slash? It's it's smaller than a slash. Um, it's it's smaller, bro. It's it's much smaller. This is not a big chassis. This really is like kind of the scale of an Xseed. It's, it's not a heavy, it's not a big or a heavy chassis. These were kind of low end, low end, low end cars. <laughs> there are more ago, soon Dollar Tree, you're going to pay paying five bucks. Yeah, they're going to rename themselves to the five Dollar Tree, like that dumbass store five below. Honestly, guys, I think five below is the world's worst store. They're all owned by the same exact corporation. They've just segmented them in such a way to convince people that you can get better stuff at five below. Uh, where literally everything that you want is like exactly $5. But it all sucks anyway. Oh man, there's a lot of grease and dirt on here. Yeah, Nitro Power goes as the world's thinnest drive shaft. It would almost break, yeah. Well, luckily these engines aren't really that powerful. Another thing, check out. We do have adjustable brake bias. Although, is it adjustable? Yeah, yeah, we have individual brake bias. Check it out. We have two little knobs, uh, screws, right? Well, not they're not called set screws. They're not set screws. Uh, thumb screws. I think these are called thumb screws. So pretty intricate setup. It's really rare to see front and rear adjustable brake bias on a 10 scale chassis. I don't think I've ever seen that on any other nitro. Ha has anyone here? If you have, I'll be uh, thumb screw. Yeah, they're called thumb screw. And you know what? I'm going to go wash this in a sink, man. Yeah, but very intricate setup. Um, I mean, this Kyosho, like I said before, you know, even if you drove a Geo Metro, uh, this Kyosho has some inter interesting parts. 10 scale, adjustable front and rear brake bias. I don't think any other RC exists that has it. The Kyosho Perfect Servos, I'm frankly surprised they survived. Fuel tank seems to be a very good large capacity as well. Right? Center diff, it looks like all that oil has leaked out and caused, well, dirt all over it, right? Yeah, Earl Moore goes, he got a drone on Timo, Timu, and it was the size of a nickel. Yeah, all these, like, Chinese companies, um, I mean, they basically, man, it's sickening. I don't even know what to say about them because technically we all use them. And then, like, we all sit and talk as if they're bad. But we all use them, you know. We are actually the problem. So, although me personally, I've only ordered a couple things on, like, AliExpress over the years. Very, very few things. Just because of the shipping weight. And now, like, the shipping policies are just really cost prohibitive. Yeah. If you're going to get a drone, uh, honestly, I would only recommend the DJI drones. All the other drones. I, I used to do drones on this channel, if you guys weren't aware. I did do drones on this channel. You really need a DJI drone. Uh, all these other ones, the apps are useless. Um, DJI drone is really where you want it to be. If you're, you know, kind of, you know, saving on the little money aspect of it, trust me, anything you spend on a Timu drone, you're going to throw it straight in the trash. Uh, it, it's literally garbage. In fact, if you guys want, I will take a drone right now and break it in, on the video for you. You want me to take a drone right now and break it in a video? Okay. Let me, let me um, switch, switch it a little bit. You guys want me to take a fairly expensive drone and break it in the video right now? Should I do it, Melissa and everybody? I'll go find the drone right now and like snap that shit in half. Basically, they're useless. I'm gonna tell you something like these older drones are like super useless. All right, let me let me go pick one, okay?
All right, everybody. I got a Chinese drone over here. In fact, this one was the one I did a video about. It's actually a really good video. Like, literally nobody watched it, so it's, it's going to get killed right now, okay? This is uh, pretty much a good a good a drone. Um, I would give it to a person, but honestly, you, you don't want this drone. It, it will piss you off, but I did do a video on it. It flew kind of okay. I slapped it in one of the videos. I just went like this to it. So, this is a Sima X-21. In fact... Uh, a very popular drone for the time period. I don't know if it's still going to work or not. It's a little on the old side, but it never really crashed. Sima X-21. Uh, uh, it needs to get charged. So, you guys want me to um, to kill this right now? So, no, nobody wants this as a giveaway. It's actually junk. Like I'm going to be honest with you, it's junk. These batteries don't charge after a while. Um, this one's leaking on the inside. It's, it's pretty much junk, guys. It's the, This one won't charge anymore. That's why I don't fly it no more. I actually used to fly it at home. It was pretty fun. So, what's it going to take for me to try to break this in half? I hope I don't cut my hands. Okay, so should we do it? Go ahead. They're pretty flyable when they're new, but the batteries are like a two-minute charger, two-minute two like flight time. It's basically trash. Okay, so... Damn, it's actually pretty, it's, it's pretty sturdy. I don't know if I could break this, to be honest with you. Yeah. RR3 goes, take a chain, so I got one. But, um, I'm not going to start it up right now. So, I'm going to break it. Based, this drone's junk. I'm just going to throw it out. I was going to recycle it anyway. So, let me, so, I don't know if it will break or not, to be honest with you. So, damn, this thing is tough. I don't think I could break it. This drone is tougher than I expected, guys. It's sickening. I can't break it. It's a tough airframe. All right. We're just going to snap it off. There you go. Now no one will ever fly this crap again. All right. This, this thing is literally junk. Now, plastic quality is quite adequate, though. Lucas Stall Cup goes all four. We'll do it, man. There we go. You want to go fly? You won't make it. All right. Anyways. Yeah, these drones are junk, basically. These batteries, like, basically what happens is you wind up spending more on the batteries than, like, the drone itself. They're only, like, for indoor flight. As soon as you're outside and there's, like, even a minor, minor, minor wind, like, for, like, three or four miles an hour, you can't even go anywhere, you know? <laughs> Sickening. I have a giant drone. Uh, I would break it, but I know there's going to be some individuals here that are going to cry. Oh, why don't I give it to somebody? I give people nitros, not terrible Chinese drones. All right. I do have, um, I don't know if you guys remember, the Sima X5C. Anybody remember the Sima X5C? Sima X5C? S-Y-M-A? I, uh, I had that on the channel many times. I also have its bigger brother, Sima X9C. Smithfield Wheels goes, yes, I got one. I also have the Sima X9C. The thing is with those Sima drones, they're actually pretty good if you just want to fly around, but uh, they have no GPS, right? Well, we're talking to the old generation drones, like from the, the heyday of this channel, maybe over six years ago, really. Um, let's see who else we got here. Right, guys i'll talk a little while longer and um i got a little bit of 3d printing to do i'm gonna order the new printer soon because i want to make 
good spur gears. So those of you that um, didn't see this, this is just a small example of what the printer I have can do. This is 3D printed. The problem is it, it's not a very good printer. Um, basically what's called, what's up there? RC Adventures, welcome back, man. I know you had a busy night. I'm happy to see you here, man. Um, you guys want to see another Sima drone that I have? I'm not going to break that one because that one's actually expensive. If I find the remote, I'll give it away to somebody. But the thing is with these drones, man, like they're not very safe to fly because uh, they're not a DJI drone. But I can go get it. You want me to go get it? Tell me to go get it. I'll go get it. So this is um, the much, much larger Sima. This one actually flew kind of okay. What's up there, Dre? 3577, happy to see you here, man. This is the larger Sima. Um, the blades are pretty enormous. It's it's very light. This ran a, um, a 2S LiPo, I'm quite sure. I don't know where the battery is now. I think I was using the battery on this uh, somewhere else. But once again, these drones were basically all show. They flew okay, they were quite fast but they had no GPS, so it was basically useless, right? There were ones with, um, I think like some kind of auto hold, but it was garbage. It wasn't really a GPS type system. So if you're gonna get a drone, I highly recommend you get like a proper, like even if you wanna get like a DJI Mini 2, uh, Xavier's RC Adventures here, RC Adventures got the Mini 2. He flies it, he has a good time. Um, I know other people here are into drones right now, Stone FPV into drones as well. I don't know if he's watching, but he is. Anyway, um, the cameras on these were like literally straight, straight garbage. In fact, you could see I, I even took the camera off on this one because it was so bad. Uh, they don't have any, like, uh, you couldn't, there was no gimbal, right? So it was a stationary camera. It was just looking down at like whatever angle. You have to fly and just like hope you get something. And then when you uploaded it, even though they told you it was a 4K drone, the quality was like 240p. It was worse than 240p. Forget 240p would have been luxury. That would have been the Tesla Model S of quality. It was the frame rate were garbage. Okay. Joe Pacelli, how you doing? Which one did you use in your videos? I um, In my older videos, I used the DJI Mini, the original DJI Mini. So the Mini was very good. It didn't have any uh, like modern features like the new drones have, which is like, you know, I, I guess like quick shots. It didn't have that. So I did use the DJI Mini. I eventually bought the DJI Air 2, uh, but then like the local police here, like pretty much crazy and overpaid. So I got rid of it. They were trying to kick my ass, you know? Um, that's right, Earl Moore goes 240p with 15 frames per second. Yeah, I actually have the old footage somewhere. I could probably find it. In fact, let me see. I might even have it like on this Mac. Let me check this out. Let me uh, let me do a quickie, hold on. I might have some video footage from, uh, this might be a different computer. All right, wrong computer, we don't have it. Well, we don't got it on this computer. Um, it's on another computer. I have like five Mac computers I'm rotating. So you, you'll have to understand, guys. Anyway, yeah, these drones basically suck. Um, their return to home system is garbage. It's not really, it doesn't know coordinates. So like it's, it, if it flies away, it's gone. See ya, you know? Uh, I do have the radio somewhere to it. This was... Not very expensive, maybe like $110 at the time when they, these were new. These were not very cheap. But this was at a time when DJI, I think the Mini wasn't even really out yet, you know. All right, we got over 110 people here. I'm going to be here for a couple more minutes, guys. I appreciate your viewership. Uh, Kyosho DRT needs to be made great again, everybody. What did you think about that interesting pull starter assembly? You ever seen anything like it? 
you should have seen it. It's interesting. Okay. Now, I do want to devote a little bit of time to what do you guys think? Should I get the Traxxas Max Slash? Well, as I said before, I'm not predominantly a uh, electric channel. I do already have the LiPos, right? I do have the LiPos. Uh, so that's like a cost that I won't have to really put up. And I'm kind of approaching it from a historical aspect. Uh, the reason I would consider it, I'm not saying I'm going to get it, guys. I don't want you to think I'm going to get it. I'm considering it. Terra Curry goes, yes, that's a strange Kyosho engine. It's pretty interesting. So actually, it has no one-way bearing, right? But the negative part is the three engine screw mounting positions. So if this is dead, which it has low compression, I already know it has low compression, it's super low. Um, it's going to be a situation, to be honest with you. Now, um, Earl Moore goes, yes, the slash would be great, but don't pay full retail. Unfortunately, Traxxas doesn't know who I am. Like the stuff I have on this channel... Um, I buy it with, like with my own money anyway, you know, usually like, you know, to YouTube money if I'm lucky, but um, The only free RC I ever got was the Savage. Okay. Now I want you guys to know um, These electric channels uh, electric companies constantly try to give me free crap I don't take any of it right because like they're toy grade RCs like I'm not gonna waste your time Reviewing another dumbass WL toys. I'm not gonna do it. Um, I did do it a while ago but that was years ago, so if you go see it, that was years ago. I don't do it anymore. Okay, now, we got sickening Megatech dragsters in the background. Someone asked earlier what that is. Megatech, baby, Megatech. So, uh, Rinks, good comment. He goes, the Arma Mojave is basically the same. That's true. And the Mojave is much cheaper. Honestly, I almost got a Mojave a while ago as a camera car. Hoser, how you doing? He goes, I don't watch electric RC reviews. <laughs> You'll have to skip that one. So the reason I would even consider the Max Slash is just because I have the entire lineup of the Slashes, right? I have the Nitro Slash. I have, well, technically the Slayer. I guess you could call it a four-wheel drive Slash if it was renamed, right? I have the two-wheel drive VXL Slash. I have a 4 by 4 Slash. So I, I have the entire lineup of Slashes. Um, I don't really want an X-Max. I don't like the way X-Max drive. I've driven them several times. I know people love them, and uh, nothing wrong with that. They're nice, juicy-ass truck, right? I, I just don't want it. Uh, personal preference, really. Um, Michael Sucha goes, Hybrid, do I have a video on the dragster behind me? So I never did a video on this dragster fully uh, just because, you know, I kind of, like, forgot. But if you want to take a look at it a little closer, this is probably the nicest condition one. Uh, anybody will really ever see it's a two-speed Megatech uh, 1.6 horsepower from a 0.16 right um, like new probably never had fuel in it Chris Chanelli engine super super rare man super super rare uh, it's very long now I know the other day somebody in a nitro game group posted a picture of this and a new era dragster the new era dragster is way more collectible it's almost twice the size but for um, this scale of dragster, this will hit 60, right? It does have a fairly solid rear suspension. There's just like, you know, links like that, turnbuckles. So basically, you could say it's a solid suspension, but the whole goal is it's supposed to flex uh, the chassis when it's driving. You can't see it because the, the, the body is on, but it does flex. That's why you have such a thin, long chassis. So it does actually flex. No scrapes at all on the bottom. Um, this is in perfect condition. I will eventually do a video, a nice driving video on this, but, um, you know, keep in mind, this is like 2000s technology over here. So, you know, um, you gotta be, you gotta take it easy, you know? So guys, what do you think? Max slash, should I try to get it or what? And keep in mind, I'm doing it. I, I will probably use it as like a camera car, right? Cause, um, as you saw, this is what happened when I used the Nitro as a camera car after uh, after about 200 times. So I do need like a larger a larger chassis that is like soft. Uh, I can like do some chase video, stuff like that, right? Now, oh, let me see what you guys are saying. Uh, people saying rock and roll goes, yes, get the max slash. So 700 bucks is not cheap. Honestly, if it was like 550, I wouldn't worry about it. 700 is a little bit up there. Rusty Nail, how you doing, man? Long time no see. Rusty Nail does uh, modeling as well, right? Like, well, actual model, model making. 
Um, I made a model engine stand, man. Model engine stand, 3D printer. All right, anyways, let me see what you guys are saying, and then we will continue. All right. Um, guys, if you want a short course truck, I did put a couple links in the description to this video, which is the Nitro Slash or the Slayer Pro 4x4. I highly recommend you click those links. Uh, at A-Main, they're like the cheapest you will find. I have all of them myself. They're highly recommended. You will basically hit 50 miles per hour if you want, right? It's going to be literally the best Nitro Short Course you can buy if you get a Slayer. Um, and they're under 500 bucks, like... I think it's a good idea. Okay, everybody. Uh, Hoser 1 is dominant, adamant, rather, on no to the Nitro Slash. Sickening, you know. But we'll see, man. I'm not saying I will or I won't buy it yet. Um, it is a substantial amount of money. But let's look at it this way. In a Nitro world, out of the new cars at least, I basically have or have had on the channel uh, all of them. You know, I, I would say, other, with the exception of some of the X-Ray kits and the Serpent kits, I haven't had those. But out of the Nitros, uh, I'm kind of at the brim of uh, of uh, totality here, so to say. I'm at the brim of totality, you know. Uh, it's basically no more. But when it comes to the old RCs, it never ends. There's always something we haven't had, okay. So, uh, let's see, we got... Reader Racing RC goes new to your channel. I'll be looking forward to your next show. Thank you, man. I appreciate you being here. Um, I hope you enjoyed the live stream. If you're new, I want you to know that if you go to the videos tab, the videos are completely different format from the live streams here. I basically like sit, I repair stuff, you know, uh, look at people's comments, stuff like that. But the actual videos, that's where you get some sickening RC action, you know? Um, and this weekend, there will be some more, man. I'm going to go charge up my camera. Not this one, because it's dead. You know, you saw the lens, it's cracked. And um, we'll make some RCs great again. Videos, right? Okay, guys, that's about it. Sean Block, yes. I'm going to read this comment. Sean Block bought the low C8 uh, for 269 at A-Main. Um, yeah, so now the deal is gone. There's no more 269. I kept, tell I kept telling people to buy it. I think, like, two people did that listened to me. Um, but... I had the low C8. I, I don't really want it in particular again. It was a good chassis for what it is, but they are highly limited in terms of gearing. Um, but I do have low C8 videos, okay? All right, guys. That's about it, everybody. Thank you all for being here. Kyoto DRT. I'm going to watch this, repair it. And it's maybe even tomorrow. If things go well, I will try to fire it up, okay? If I'm motivated. All right, Tara Curry, everybody. Thank you for hanging out with me today. Tomorrow will be a new awesome video, and then I will go shop at Costco and try to see what inflation is like. Have a good night, everybody. Stay positive, and that doesn't mean to think you're being positive and then be an asshole in the background. Don't do that. Don't be a, a little bitch in the background, okay? Be a positive individual and do things the right way. Don't piss people off and then tell yourself, I'm positive. Oh, I'm just positive. That's, that's not positive. Being positive for the sake of saying I'm positive is actually a really bad thing to do, okay? It's a bad thing to do. Hoser 1 goes, I got two of the low C8s. The only low C right now out of the new ones I would want to get, I'll be honest with you, man, is the Truggy version. I wouldn't mind the Truggy version. If the Truggy version goes on sale, I will get it. But for me, I've had the low C8 buggy. In fact, it was the best driving buggy I've ever had. It's not very fast. It needs like a gearing upgrade. But... Um, uh, it's a very stable chassis, very good shocks, good engine, but bad low gearing. The only problem, you know? All right, Costco pizza, everybody. It's on, not me. See you all later. How you end this? Okay, here we go.